A star in every sense of the word, with a heart that touched every soul. No one deserves to be treated like this, justice must be served. And rest in peace together. Just some of the words left in tributes for Jesse Baird and Luke Davies, the couple allegedly killed by a police officer. More details emerging today, he had a key to the house, a triple zero call, but still Jesse and Luke haven't been found. Police Commissioner Karen Webb and her deputy Dave Hudson begin an hour long grilling. To try and fill in some gaps um, for obviously members of the public who show um, obvious, obvious interest in this matter. This matter, an alleged killer cop. The victims, TV presenter Jesse Baird and his Qantas flight attendant partner, Luke Davies. So quite uh, welcome to take any questions. Allegedly gunned down by cop and former celebrity blogger Bo Lamar Condon. Today we learned of several dramatic and chilling developments, including the frightening revelation that Jesse told friends he woke one night to see a shadowy figure at the end of his bed late last year. For reasons only known to him, he didn't report it. There has been activity um, reported at that house, uh, which in hindsight um, appears suspicious. Equally alarming, what could have been the last desperate phone call made from Jesse's phone. Last Monday, February 19 at 9.50 a.m., multiple gunshots are heard at Jesse Baird's Paddington Terrace in Sydney's Inner East. Four minutes after the first all shots were fired, there was a AAA call made from Jesse's phone. However, it disconnected. And do you believe that that call was made by Jesse Baird, or do you believe that that call may have been made by his killer? At this stage, um, I would not like to speculate. I'd rather investigate um, than speculate. That evening, the alleged killer hired a white high ace from Sydney Airport. Tuesday, police allege Lamar Condon made partial admissions to a female acquaintance of being involved in the two deaths. Did he ever admit to the acquaintances that he'd actually killed anyone? To one of the acquaintances on the Tuesday, um, there were certain admissions, partial admissions made in relation to that activity. However, that information at the time um, was not passed on to police. Wednesday, bloodied clothing, a credit card and an $8,000 watch found dumped in a skip bin in Cronulla. It sparks a search of Jesse Baird's home. Signs of a struggle and blood are found, despite a clean-up attempt. Had it been pretty much cleaned up or there was blood around? Uh, there was no significant amount of, amounts of blood located at the crime scene. Obviously, further forensic testing uh, through different strategies that the forensics unit and the crime scene unit uses. Um, the results of that have not been obtained as yet. Later that day, the accused and the acquaintance, described as a long-time friend, drive to Bungonia, 185 kilometres southwest of Sydney. We believe that that acquaintance um, assisted um, the accused in purchasing an angle grinder and a padlock um, from a local hardware store in that area. They turn up at a property on Hazelton Road, Bungonia. The angle grinder was used to sever a padlock um, from the gate of those, that particular rural property and subsequently that padlock was replaced with a padlock purchased from um, the hardware store. The acquaintance was left at the top of the property for a period of about 30 minutes. Um, the accused disappeared for that period in the high ace van. The pair drive 185 k's back to Sydney. At 11pm that evening, um, weights were purchased from a department store by the accused and it is believed that the accused returned to that rural property um, during um, overnight. The next morning at 4.30, he drives back to Sydney. It would appear that the accused has remained in the city area, um, still in control of the white high ace van, before attending a further acquaintance premises at Newcastle in the Newcastle area. And um, without fully disclosing any criminality, um, asked um, access to hose to clean that van. Friday, the accused leaves Newcastle about 5am and drives 170 kilometres to Sydney. At 10.30am, 
he surrenders to police at Bondi Station. While there's optimism they are closing in, there's one gap in the timeline that worries Deputy Commissioner Hudson. We are working at this stage um, from about 11.30 on the Thursday up until 8.30 on the Thursday night um, when he next uh, appeared at a further acquaintances premises at Newcastle. It would appear that the accused um, was suspicious of the acquaintance that attended with him and about her beliefs of what he might have been up to and very likely may have returned to those bodies later that evening. Um, and that, in that case, um, we believe that he may have moved them. It's just one of many questions police and Jesse and Luke's families are desperate to answer. As for the public, concerns about how Lamar Condon was able to take his police gun home, use it at this house four days later and keep it a further day before returning it. There's a process, obviously, there's standing operating procedures in relation to it, which will be reviewed. Well, there you go. Processes will be reviewed. Former New South Wales detective Peter Moroni joins me. Peter, we appreciate your time. I think the whole country, including myself, wants to know, why did he have access to his gun when he wasn't working his shift? Look, he wasn't on what we would call a technical shift or on duty. What he was doing was a user pay service. What that is in the most simplest terms is if you think of something like the NRL, a number of police are required to work that shift. So to be able to do that, they offer police additional duties when their actual rostered days off are there, and that, it, that allows them to then attend for additional pay and to work for the user or the end user that needs them to perform that policing service. So that event you're talking about, it took place on the Sunday, yet he um, got his gun out the previous Thursday. Is that common practice, to have it for that long? The fact that it's signed out on a Thursday uh, and not uh, and the user pays not till the Sunday, that that is going to be an area of focus for the review, I, I have no doubt. He returns his gun on Tuesday. How does no one notice that there are bullets missing? Are weapons not checked? From my experience, no, they're not generally checked to say 15 bullets out, 15 bullets in. Uh, magazines are the responsibility of the individual officer. There is an obligation that if an officer does discharge his weapon, then that would be reported. It's mandatory for it to be reported. But obviously, if we link it back to the current case we're talking about, yeah. it's logical that the person that's alleged to have done the shooting is not going to declare that he's mm. discharged his firearm. I mean, I understand this is all pretty new territory. We never think that a police officer is going to do what Lamar Condon is alleged to have done, use his police issue gun to murder two innocent good people questions do have to be answered. We'll have the criminal trial and that's going to address a large number of issues in return in terms of guilt. But parallel to that there is going to be the internal inquiry but there will also be I would imagine the coronial inquest that will come further down the line and that too will turn a spotlight on police practices. Do you think a whole lot is going to change in light of this alleged incident? I have no doubt they will identify some flaws that have occurred in the procedures, perhaps the flaws of some individuals that didn't complete their duties as far as they practically could. I do expect that to come out. Peter, how hard does it hit knowing one of your own, a police officer, is charged with the worst crime possible? It goes against everything you believe in. Um, you know, Ali, you, you don't join the uh, New South Wales Police Force in terms of the big pay that one receives. You do it uh, for a sense of duty. You do it because you want to make a difference in people's lives. Then to hear about allegedly what has occurred, it goes against everything that every New South Wales police officer and probably indeed every, every law enforcement officer in Australia believes. I've spoke to many a police and they are absolutely disgusted in terms of what's happened. And I think we've seen that from them over the past week, how much everyone is hurting from this. The vetting process, uh, that's in place at the moment. This is a guy who was supposedly or seemed to be stalking celebrities before he became a police officer. Is that something that should have raised red flags? Oh, look, in terms of... I've, I've heard different reports that he was a vlogger, he would follow celebrities. In, in some instances, no different to paparazzi to that point. Now, as part of joining the New South Wales Police Force, there's several different uh, psychometric tests that are done. But 
that is a bit of a point in time process, Ali. So for myself, by way of example, I was in the New South Wales Police for 19 years, but it wasn't, and it is not, to my understanding, a regular yearly thing that's completed. And it's also easier to say all these things with the benefit of hindsight too. Are there any then ongoing assessments? I mean, in regards to um, Lamar Condon, he was again looked at after the taser incident in 2020. He was cleared, but the vision is pretty confronting. Being a, a critical incident of some description, there would have been an independent review into that, and I understand there was. Part of that, was there a psychometric re-evaluation uh, of him at the time? I, I don't know. Looking at what's alleged to have happened, what kind of things would you put forward to consider changing? How a police officer uh, can have his uh, weapon uh, and without it being detected. I certainly think that's got to be a key focus. In terms of the, the amount of ammunition, like for example, if police expend a round, they can't simply go and replace that round. Countrywide, there is a shortage of police officers. Does that play into who they're letting into the force? It shouldn't, and if it does, and that's got to beg the question, because if you lower the bar against your current standards, that's when potential issues will rise. Well, Peter, I know every police officer feels it, and for the families of Jesse and Luke, as we all do, really appreciate your time. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Ali.